Hello Arts 102 and welcome to the Balance Unit. We're going to start off with a little intro movie here for you.
I just love that. I think that is a great little short film intro to the balance unit. It's just one of my favorites. So we're going to talk about balance. This is all about visual weights and how uh, they're going to distribute on the page or picture plane and what kind of effect they're going to have, what kind of visual pull they're going to have. Um, you might have a composition that's in balance or you might have a composition that's out of balance. Main takeaways from this particular unit are um, especially the concepts of symmetry, asymmetry, and radial. You might have heard of those before. So uh, we got some other stuff we're going to talk about too, but those are definitely the big ones. You want to make sure that you get those down before you get started on your homeworks. Balance it refers to the distribution of visual weight. Visual weight is the key to visual balance. A balanced composition is one that has achieved equilibrium of opposing or interacting elements, but it is not necessarily a state of calm. Uh, we can see here a frame from a particular movie you might have seen before, and it's a good example of an imbalanced composition. Uh, and by that I just mean um, all the focus is on about a quarter of the composition here. Well, what's going on? Um, did this photographer not know what he was doing? No, he did. What's going on here is the the composition is created to um, elicit tension in the viewer. Um, your mind is feeling like there's a huge amount of empty space and there's got to be something that's going to happen in that empty space. Um, if you wanted to pretend that there was no foreshadowing up to this point, you'd still be feeling a little tension looking at this image because seems like there's something that should be going on in that empty space. Also, the fact that there's kind of a dark figure behind the the uh, s the curtains there, kind of silhouetted. So, um, our minds kind of take issue with that. And, like I said, um, there's been foreshadowing up to this point in the story, but if you threw that out, you'd still feel a little tension from this composition. Balance means no element is unintentionally pulling viewer attention away. Human beings have a natural tendency to balance. It's a survival reflex. We just feel more comfortable when things are balanced. Focal points showing up again. So focal points are the points of interest that the artist intends to draw viewer attention to. They are the thesis or theses, the main ideas, the point of the art in as much as there is a point. They can either be dynamic or stable. Reinforcing the borders uh, are, is going to be stable and countering the borders with diagonals is going to be dynamic. So we can see the focal point here pretty clearly. He's countering the borders. He's in motion. He's dynamic. Um, he's also got a spotlight on him and he's dressed very outrageously but um, definitely got some compositional elements going on there. So these are these elements are at rest or stable. They're horizontal. They're seen as not moving and at rest. Uh, these elements are also seen as not moving and in balance and at rest, um, but they're upright. So now this is interpreted as strong and secure, typically. And then when we turn something a little bit, get it into motion. It's got a little diagonal. It's countering the picture plane. So now it's in motion. Now things are starting to move. The edges of a picture plane create a strong visual pull and tension. Or to put it another way, an element trying not to be contained has more visual weight than the exact same element closer to the center of the picture plane. What is visual weight? Let's use the image of a seesaw, and unequal weights are going to tip. Equal weights will be straight, unequal will tip. Um, if we've got two identical elements, um, placement will have an effect on weight. Elements on the right will have more visual weight than identical elements on the left due to our learned ability to le read left to right. If you're from a culture where text is read right to left, you will find the opposite is true. You're going to feel that the left element has the more visual weight. The fill is going to have a different visual weight. If it's hollow 
or open, the element will have less visual weight than the same element with a solid fill. Size, pretty much a no-brainer. Two of the same elements, one is smaller, it has less visual weight than the same element if it's larger. Pretty simple. Value, higher value contrasts cause more visual weight. There's a big change here um, in visual contrast between the white circle and the back background. Yeah, black background, <laughs> sorry. The, uh, there's a huge difference between that, but don't be confused. It's not like lighter elements automatically have more visual weight. See, if I switch it to a light background, now the two, the exact same circles with the exact same values are now feeling like the gray one, the dark gray is much heavier than the white because that white is now a lot closer to the background. So it's about the contrast, it's about the context, what kind of visual weight you're going to feel. Gravity. Elements on the bottom are heavier with greater visual weight due to our learned perception of gravity. If you've got an element at the top, we're going to feel like it's floating. Elements on the bottom feel like they're anchored. Symmetry, and here's um, one of the types of compositions you'll be trying to create. Sometimes symmetry is referred to as formal balance. Basically, the image has a mirror line, with one side being a mirror image of the other. And here's probably one of the most famous images of symmetry, or the most famous images of symmetry. A composition that is basically symmetrical, or feels symmetrical, though not a literal image, still counts as symmetrical. Symmetry or approximate symmetry are very common in architecture and virtually ubiquitous in ancient architecture. And here's an example of um, approximate or new school symmetry, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not a literal mirror line that you can draw and get an exact duplicate on either side. But if you reduce this into shapes, just think about the foreground as a shape and the background as one shape. And you begin to see, um, once it's flattened into shapes, you really begin to see the compositional symmetry going on. Asymmetry balanced by different visual elements, differing visual weights or high contrast values. Asymmetry is more dynamic, suggests action, movement, or change, and it has no mirror line. So basically nowhere can you draw a mirror line through this image and get a duplicate on either side of that mirror line. Radial balance. In radial balance, elements radiate out from a central position. Radial balance is neither symmetrical nor asymmetrical. It's very easy to maintain focal points in radial balance because all roads lead to the focal point when you're creating a radial composition. And radial composition suggests infinity or infinite movement. So this is just an example of that. Okay. And rule of thirds. Um, this is one of those things it's that there's the R word. It's kind of a four-letter word in an art class. The uh, rule of thirds you can you can take it or leave it. It doesn't bother me that much, um, and I'm certainly not really grading you on it. But it's it's almost universally agreed that using this makes your uh, pictures look better, especially photographers. They're really into this thing. The uh, rule of thirds just states that focal and accent points should be placed at one-third intervals within the picture plane. And in a landscape, the horizon line is often placed on one of the two horizontal lines, as you can see here. And this is just, like I said, it's not anything that you're um, that you're expected to use like religiously or anything like that, but it's out there, it's something that you can use if you want it, and you know, just experiment with it, see if it works for you. Um, and that's about it. Thank you very much for listening, and have a nice day.